I used to believe, like I'm sure most people do, that uh, camping is less comfortable than living in a house. But I managed to prove myself wrong. Now I'm going to prove it to you. When I decided the best way to travel is to spend extended periods sleeping in a tent, I began to apply my brain. Now, before you start laughing, I was conditioned by decades of developing practical solutions to physical problems in construction work. So I applied this time and motion skill set to designing a camping arrangement that wasn't almost as comfortable as living in a house, but was actually more so. I went to first principles. I arrived at uh, something comfortable to sleep on, somewhere comfortable to sit, and some method of maintaining a warm tent environment. So, in no particular order, I actually think a comfortable chair is more important than a, a comfortable bed. Because when you're in bed, you're asleep. So I searched long and hard for a comfortable folding chair, touring through dozens of websites, camping forums and YouTube videos, and I found the Alight Mayfly to be the one most ideal for my situation. They're made in San Francisco and cost around $100. It is really comfortable. Packs down to about the size of a Nalgene bottle, weighs less than a kilo, and is the kind of feet that don't push through your ground sheet. It's so comfortable, I actually fall asleep in it most days before I've even made up my bed. Now some people ask, why not sit on the ground? Or your sleeping mat or a small piece of foam or something? Well, I've tried all that and a chair makes a massive, massive difference. I can relax without lying down, taking in a sunset or contemplating life while staring into the depths of a fire, or all the more poignant from the juxtaposition of a chair. I think it's civilization's best invention. An optional extra is my uh, La Volta folding desk. I don't particularly need this, but I like it. It multitasks as a cooking platform, a work desk for writing, a dining table, an insulating barrier for the tent heater, and a platform for my laptop or phone on movie night, which is about 192 because let's face it, I'm an international man of leisure. This is actually the third kind of sleeping mat I've used. I started out with a cheap uh, closed cell phone mat, which is okay for a week or two, but for extended trips, I wanted something a bit more bed-like. So I moved it to an Xbed Sin Mat 7. And I went through two of those in as many years. They're comfy and they're light, but they're prone to failure. The seams between the baffles gave out on both mats. The second one after literally three weeks. So I got these huge balloon sections in the mat, which made it the almost impossible to sleep on. So I decided to go heavy duty instead, and I bought this Thermorast Neoair Camper. I've been on it for a year now, and it's brilliant. It's bigger and heavier than the X-Bed, but I figured this to mean that it'd be more robust. So far, no problems. I also have this, the Thermorest Z Lite Sol foam mattress, because it's the best closed cell foam mat you can get, and sometimes I can't be asked blowing up an inflatable one. If I do have one complaint, and it's a minor one, I could do with a more comfortable pillow. This is the Xbed pillow pump, left over from my Xbed mattress days. It packs small and light, but I may well replace it at some point. The third factor is staying warm in a tent. When just like hanging out before you go to bed, I didn't want to be completely Michelin manned up in all my warm, warm clothing. Plus I wanted a method of drying out wet stuff during the winter. Thus, my tent heater. This is quite simple. It's a tin can, a terracotta plant pot, and a tea light candle. I also have a Kelly kettle. So on extremely cold nights, I can fire this baby up by boiling a kettle full of water, then keeping, keeping it warm with candles. Then I can drink coffee all night, which also keeps me warm, in addition to the kettle itself. Of course, you have to be very careful when using a stove or burning candles in a tent. And this is one of the reasons I use a three-person rather than a two-person tent. It's so I have plenty of room to avoid knocking things over. Either way, it's not a good idea if you're a clumsy bugger 
or unused to working around dangerous things. So why is it better than a house? Well, the first thing is it moves. And I don't need to stick to roads and commercial campsites like I would with a camper van, uh, an RV or a caravan. I pretty much go wherever a bicycle goes. Second, I have everything I need within arm's reach. Literally, the only thing I need to move for is the lavatory. And even then, I'd have to move much. See chapter three. Third, no insurance, no property taxes, no interfering government stews looking for his pound of flesh. If it breaks, the bank account doesn't collapse. The last summer I repaired this one rather than buy a new one. I re-waterproofed it, I replaced the poles, bought a new footprint, and a couple of hours of work cost me 70 quid rather than 200 quid. Of course, some people like to attach a social stigma to the nomadic way of life. I think this is a trick of our egos. I can't imagine not wanting to live like this. It's so much more in tune with our millions of years of evolved motivations. Living in a static house is the compromise we make for the ease of remaining domesticated, enthralled to the system. You know, like a, a cow or a pig or a chicken. The problem is that's not living. Not for me anyway. <laughs>